You know, Nook Miles used to be a pretty hot commodity in the Animal Crossing New Horizons community. That was the only way you could get certain furniture or of course Nook Miles tickets, but nowadays people just use treasure islands or just don't play anymore, so the only reason you're ever going to be using these is if you're a completionist. I never got anywhere close to completing the Nook Miles achievements. I would think about it and then realize that I would have to send 200 letters and I was like, no, I'm just not gonna do that. But that got me thinking, how easy would it be to do these achievements in real life? Because what else am I going to be thinking about? Real world issues? My taxes? No thanks. So today I'm going to be ranking every single Nook Mile achievement by how possible it is for me to be able to do them in real life. Me. A guy on the internet. Just as a disclaimer, a lot of these have different stamps that can be done which ramp up in difficulty. So for example, one of them will be catch a bug and then a little bit later on it will be catch 5,000 bugs. That's not an exaggeration by the way, one of them you really have to catch 5,000 bugs. But with that being said, I'm going to see how far I can go within that certain achievement. So you know, one bug, 20 bugs, 50 bugs, see where I can stop. With that being said, let's see how many I can do, and at the end we're going to add up how many Nook Miles I would end up having based on what I did. Oh, also some of these just like can't be translated to real life, I couldn't figure out the best way to uh, make that make sense, so we're just gonna skip some of them, I hope that's alright. First up are the Nook Miles that you get right when you start off the game. These are essentially a tutorial for the Nook Mile system, it's a freebie, you don't really have to do anything for it, so these have got to be easy, right? Wrong. This would require me to move to a deserted island which I would have to own and also name myself and like financially, I don't think I can swing that. I looked it up and a private island costs like a million bucks at minimum and my bank account just isn't looking like that. Really even if I was able to find an uninhabited island that I could potentially move to and afford, I would still have to like live there and survive there and I'm not a survivalist, I can't do that. This one's gonna have to go into D tier which is a pretty bad start. Angling for perfection is a much more doable achievement than the last, mainly because fishing is more accessible than throwing your entire life away and moving to a deserted island. The issue comes from how many fish you have to catch for these achievements. Catch 10 fish? Sure, I can probably catch 10 fish. I've probably caught more than 10 fish in my life. Catch 100 fish? I mean, maybe if I had like a boat and I knew what I was doing? Sure, maybe, but like a thousand, five thousand? I got stuff to do. And that's also assuming that I would be good at fishing, which I'm not. Back in 2020 when there was like nothing to do, I would just go to the pond behind my house and fish for like hours almost the whole day. You know how many fish I caught? Zero. I don't even know if there were fish in that pond, but like I needed something to do, I couldn't just sit around. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in C tier because I feel like even if I'm being generous, I can really only get to that 100 fish threshold in my entire life. Island ich is just a Island Ixtistologist? Fish scientist. Just say fish scientist. Isn't this supposed to be a game for babies? This achievement is for catching different species of fish, which I feel like would just kind of come with the territory of catching different fish. Let's do some math. Let's assume that I go fishing four times a year. I think that's reasonable for somebody who kind of likes fishing. We'll say I can fish until I'm 60, so I've got about 35 more years of fishing. That's about 140 trips. Casual anglers online seem to catch about one to five fish per trip, so we'll call it two, which is looking at at a total of about 280 fish in a lifetime. Obviously not every single one of these catches is going to be a different species, in fact I'm probably not going to have that many different areas that I can fish in, so it's probably going to be just like Animal Crossing where I do nothing but catch bass. I think 20 species seems fair, 40 seems like way too high, but 10 seems too low, so I think 20 is a good middle ground. C tier sounds about right for this one as well. Island Togetherness rewards you for chatting with residents. Try talking to your neighbors every day. Oh. This one is probably easy for somebody who doesn't get anxious when they talk to people, but that's just not me. It also really doesn't help that my upstairs neighbors sound like they are slam dunking their children into the ground at 6am every morning, so to me, that doesn't really make me want to exchange pleasantries with them all the time. Even still, I think that I can suck it up and tell my neighbors hi for a month and a half. S tier. The bug based achievements seem much easier than the fishing achievements, like I live in Louisiana so all I have to do is open up my door and mosquitoes are gonna fly in probably by the thousands. Or better yet, I'll just take a net to an anthill and easily surpass that 5000 bug threshold. There's a reason why you see the little kids trying to catch bugs instead of try to reel on a catfish. It's because bugs are easy. 
S tier. The Bugs Don't Bug Me Critterpedia achievement seems a little bit more difficult just because you do have to identify different species, but even still, like 60 species of bugs is not that bad. There are over a million different species of bugs, so I feel like my odds are pretty good, especially since there are apparently like 20,000 different worm species. I'll just go dig in the ground. It would definitely be more time consuming, so I'm gonna put it into A tier, but really I feel like this is still something completely achievable. The Have a Nice DIY achievement is a little bit difficult to translate into real life because in the description it specifically says that you get Nook Miles for the amount of DIYs that you have collected. This to me seems to indicate that all I really need is access to the recipe or some way to look up the instructions on how to do it. And luckily, I live in the 21st century where I can get paid to make lists like this and also look up how to do basically anything. If I wanted to look up how to make a bomb, I'd probably get put on a watch list, but I would also probably find a pretty helpful step-by-step -step guide. I read the fine print and it never actually says that I have to make the things that I learn, at least not for this particular achievement. So I think I can pretty safely put this one in S tier because I have the entire wealth of human knowledge at my fingertips. I thought we'd be alright in the animal catching department after we did the bugs, but turns out this next one is sea creatures. Not only would it just be difficult to collect a sea creature without some sort of deep sea training, but also legally I'm pretty sure there's something in place for me going in and just yoinking a sea anemone out of there. I feel like the beach police would want to have a word. Could I grab 5 pieces of seaweed? Probably. Could I grab 50? Let's just leave this one in D tier. It also probably goes without saying that the Critterpedia portion of this achievement also goes in D tier because if I'm underwater, I can't pull out my phone and look up what the species is, and that's kind of the whole point of this. Next up is making DIY tools, and this one seems like it would be an easy fail, but I actually have a history of building things. And sometimes when you're building things, you have to get creative with the things that you're using. Does your router need something straight to follow when you're trying to cut a groove? Just straighten out a piece of wood and boom, you've got a router fence. That's a tool. Sure, I'm not making a bandsaw from scratch, but I think as long as something serves the purpose that it should, it can count as a tool. Plus, what can we even consider a tool? If I build an ice chest, wouldn't that be a tool for keeping drinks cold? I don't know. I feel like I've convinced myself enough to put it into B tier and convinced you guys to probably argue about it in the comments. Building DIY furniture is not quite as easily loopholed as building tools, but like I said, I actually have a history of building things, so this one is not off the table. In fact, I've already built more than five guitars by hand. This is one of them. Uh, so we're already past that first stamp. Also, the things that are considered furniture in this game vary widely in terms of complexity. Like, I'm sure that I can't make a flying saucer, but Maybe things like scattered papers or a gaming desk? Okay, sure, I can scatter five pieces of paper and call it a day. B tier. The furniture freshener achievement is about refurbishing furniture, which once again does not seem that hard. Really all you have to do is know how to use a paintbrush and a palm sander and you'll be fine. And really they don't even say that it has to look good, so you can just do it. In fact, I could just paint a fence over and over again and be like Tom Sawyer without all the, you know, racial stuff. This one's going in A tier. I am obviously not a lumberjack, so the rough hewn achievement where you have to chop 5,000 pieces of wood just doesn't seem possible. Even the 20 pieces of wood that I would need for the first stamp does not seem doable unless I worked some type of job where I cleared out trees, which I don't. D tier. The writing a cookbook achievement wants us to learn 50 different types of recipes, which is actually really easy with today's sponsor. No, not really. That would have been good. It would have been a good transition, but no, we're not, we're not doing that. But even without blatant product placement, learning 50 recipes is not difficult. Once again, we have the internet at our fingertips, so I could just go on any website and learn how to boil an egg. Our easiest S tier so far. The next achievement for cooking food is also pretty easy. Even the hardest stamp of cooking 500 meals seems like it would be hard not to get in an entire lifetime. Technically, in the fine print, it says that the chef deserved miles for cooking something delicious, but I feel like that's more of a suggestion than a requirement. I'm still gonna put this one in S tier. Trash tools is a concerning achievement for real life because like, yeah, I've broken a tool before. If you buy a cheap tool, you're probably gonna break it. But breaking 200 tools? Buddy, if you break 200 tools, you might just be in the wrong line of work. I promise the Nook Miles are not going to outweigh the cost of having to buy a tool over and over again. But also, this achievement is just if I could do it or not, which I feel like I can. If I got like a free weekend and 250 bucks, I can just go to Harbor Freight, buy a bunch of hammers, and knock them into each other. C tier. 
Hit a rock eight times and get eight items. I mean, I can hit a rock eight times. I, I assume I can get eight different items from it. So S tier, I guess. I, I really don't know about this one. I'm gonna lump the gyroid and fossil achievements all together because they're basically the same thing of digging something up. I'm not an archeologist, so that means basically I cannot go and just dig up some dinosaur bones. And since I can't have the dinosaur bones, I also cannot get them assessed. And don't even get me started on the gyroids. Gyroids are based on Hanawa, which are are little clay figures that were buried with people whenever they passed away. Now, legally and morally, I'm pretty sure that I cannot do this. The description says, once you start experiencing life in their presence, it'll be hard to resist hunting more. And if it's that good, I do not want to get obsessed with grave robbing. All four of these are going in D tier. Greedy Weeder is an achievement where I have to sell a bunch of weeds. I'm not a drug dealer. D tier. Sorry, Leaf. The flower achievements seem pretty simple, as all I have to do is plant 300 flowers and water 1,000 flowers. Really, all I can do is just go buy some flower seeds, plant them, and then we'll be fine. It never really says that I have to actually grow those flowers. The watering one is even easier. Apparently, the flowers don't even have to be mine. I can just pull up to, like, a botanical garden with a watering can and knock this out pretty quick. Easy A tier. Tomorrow's Trees Today is an achievement about planting trees anywhere from like 5 to 30, and it never actually says that I have to physically do it myself, so I just donated 30 bucks to Team Trees and made this one an easy S tier. Pick of the Bunch is for selling fruit that in the game is fruit that you would grow, but nowhere in the fine print does it say that it has to be grown by you, so I feel like I could just get some fruit, and then resell it. I guess I could maybe sell 20 fruit. I mean, I see people selling watermelon on the side of the road, so it is possible, but like 3,000 fruit? I don't have the time or the resources to do that. C tier, I guess. The Fruit Roots achievement is six different stamps, but each of them are for planting a different type of fruit tree. Uh, as it turns out, you can just buy fruit trees to plant off the internet. I didn't know that. That's kind of cool, actually. I mean, I know you can buy anything off the internet, but believe it or not, I've never really thought about googling coconut tree for sale. This person got a dead tree and they still gave him four stars, so I think that deserves an A tier. The next achievement is Shrubbery Hubbubbery. I like that name, so I'm giving it an S tier. That's it. We have achievements for planting produce, which once again is very easy because I don't actually have to grow anything. All I have to do is plant it and then- oh. All right, well, the next one is harvesting the produce that we just planted, so maybe we need to put in a little bit more effort. Planting 200 pieces of produce seems completely possible, but harvesting a thousand tomatoes that I grew myself just isn't realistic. If we're being generous, we'll say that I can harvest 50 total produce, but that's as far as I'm willing to go. Sprout Out Loud gets an S tier, and Executive Producer gets a C tier. The Go Ahead and Be Shellfish achievement is about selling some of the different seashells that you picked up by the seashore. Not even beach tourist traps can unload these for cheap enough, so what makes you think I can do that? This one's gonna have to go in D tier. Digging up clams seems much easier in Animal Crossing than in real life, but I don't think it's impossible. Also on WikiHow, it says that I have to get a clam digging license, and I don't know if a clam digging license is real or not, but that's hilarious. B tier. Trash fishing is up next, and yeah, I'm trash at fishing. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's... Oh, we're catching trash with, with a fishing pole? I can still probably do that. Yeah, I mean, something, something, something pollution. I'm sure that I can get a bunch of Coke cans out of the water, and we'll be fine. A tier. Castmaster is notorious for being one of, if not the hardest achievement, where you have to catch a bunch of fish in a row without ever losing one. And if you thought it was hard in Animal Crossing, just think about how hard this would be in real life. Fish are way more unpredictable in real life than they are in Animal Crossing, so this one is essentially impossible even for the greatest fishermen. It's gonna go in D tier, obviously. An easy one is Hoard Reward, where you have to put 150 pieces of furniture into your home. When you first move to a spot, that number seems way too big, like you'll never reach it, but then when you move out, you realize you have far surpassed that. Yeah, this one is going in S tier. Good Things in Store is confusing, because I do not fully understand the storage system in Animal Crossing. Nookopedia says that storage units are furniture pieces like wardrobes or dressers, so I mean, I can put a bunch of items in that, I guess. How how would I fit an entire grand piano inside of a dresser? Don't ask questions. B tier. Remarkable Remodeler wants me to remodel the exterior of my house five times. I don't have the money to do that. Why would I do that? I mean, could I do it? Maybe. What would be the point of it, though? D 
safety tier. We have to help people with the Smile Isle achievement, and even though there is 300 that you have to get for that final stamp, I feel like I would help 300 people throughout my lifetime. Like, oh hey, hand me that pen. Okay, here you go. Easy stamp, easy S tier. Reaction ruler. I am very great at expressing myself through reactions and emotions. A tier. The addition of the Nook phone in New Horizons is based off of a real smartphone, which we use every day in real life. So the Island Shutterbug one is really easy. Watch, I'll take a picture right now. There we go. We're done. Easy S tier. Edit credit for editing our passport is probably not as easy. I don't even have a passport, but I doubt that I could just pull up to the courthouse and tell them that I want to add a funny little quip to my passport. I don't think it would be impossible to do, but I still think I'm going to have to put it into C tier. Nook phone life. Open up the Nook phone 10 times. That's one smartphone. Open up the Nook phone app 1000 times. Nook shopping is kind of like Amazon where you just purchase something and it shows up in your mail the next day, so I feel like even the hardest one of 200 seems like it would be pretty easy. I'll give it an A tier just because sometimes money is tight, but realistically this could be an S tier. There are achievements for both buying one thing and selling one thing, which obviously are S tiers. All you gotta do is like go to a garage sale and you'll knock it out in a day. As a bonus, you might also get a haunted video game. Moving fees paid is just paying off a mover, so like as long as I don't find the most expensive mover in existence, I'm sure that I'll be fine. S tier. You can get miles for how many bells you have spent, which actually got me curious how much money somebody in a lifetime actually spends. Apparently the average American spends 3.3 million dollars in their entire lifetime. They say that bells are essentially supposed to be yen, so like one bell is equivalent to one yen, so that would mean if we converted it, we'd spend about 500 million bells in our lifetime. That will of course far surpass the 5 million bell requirement for the highest one on this achievement, which is an S tier and also kind of sad. The turnip and stock market achievements are both difficult and easy. For the turnip one, it just wants us to buy one turnip. That's fine, we'll just be down a couple bucks. But then it wants me to make money at the stock market. Do I look like the type of guy who likes making women uncomfortable? I don't know anything about the stock market. S tier and C tier respectively. No more loan payments. Yeah, I'm never getting away from paying loans. That's gonna be a D tier. New Horizons is both living in the present and the past because it wants me to send 200 letters. Hey, Tom Nook, we're, uh, we're living in the 21st century, buddy. We do emails now. I'll put this in B tier because I feel like in my lifetime I could send 50 letters, but I'm not going anywhere over that. Catch a flea off a villager? I'm not catching a flea off anybody, man. That's uh, weirdly intimate. D tier. Cicada Memories is an easy one because all I have to do is catch the shell of a bug. I don't even have to catch the actual bug. That one's going in S tier. Netting Better wants me to catch five wasps in a row without getting stung. I could probably catch one or two. Five is way too much. C tier. Pity party. Enjoy some bonus nook miles to commemorate the creation of your first pit. Sure, I'll, I'll dig a pit. Whatever, man, at this point, I don't care. B tier. There are two separate achievements for getting knocked out by certain bugs like wasps or tarantulas. I can get stung by these things pretty easily, but unfortunately, I am built different, so they would not make me faint. I'm gonna throw it in C tier because we're not sure how poisonous some of these are. Try to donate a fake piece of art. I mean, I guess I could do that, but it probably wouldn't be easy. I'm, I guess we'll say C tier. Fun with fences wants me to put down 20 pieces of fence, which I can do, but I cannot guarantee that I'm going to have fun with it. S tier in terms of if I can do it, but C tier for false advertising. Snow Maestro is for building snowmen, which I feel like would be pretty easy for somebody that does not live in the South like me. I've seen snow a total of two times in my life, and I could of course try to make a snowman, but it's definitely not going to be perfect, and honestly with the way that things are going, I'm probably never going to see snow again in my life. C tier because there's pretty much no way I can make 20 of these. Wishing on a shooting star once again is something that I've done like once or twice, but there is no way I'm going to see 200 stars to wish on throughout my lifetime. C tier again. Finally back to a simple one with the exterior decorator achievement. All it wants me to do is place a piece of furniture outside. Sure, I'll, I'll put a couch in my front yard and look like white trash for 300 miles. Island designer is like a 2 out of 3 because I can definitely put down a path, and I can definitely put somewhere for water to go, but to build a cliff? I don't know if I can do that. How do you build a rock? B tier. Help wisp. Ghosts aren't real. Argue about it. Help gulliver. Seagulls aren't real. 
argue about it. KK Mania wants us to see KK Slider in concert 100 times. Now, KK Slider has actually played a concert in Japan as a hologram, so technically speaking, that first stamp would be possible. That is, if I would have gone to it which I didn't. And uh, I have no idea if they're ever going to do this again, so we're gonna put it in C tier because they'll probably do it another time, but they're not doing it 100 more. True patron of the arts is for buying pieces of art, and I am sure that I could buy 20 pieces of art over my lifetime. S tier. Give Pascal a scallop. I don't know any otters that are that chill. I'm gonna have to put it in D tier. The coffee achievement is a little bit tough because I definitely can buy 50 cups of coffee, but it also says that I have to enjoy the coffee, which I can't guarantee I can do. I don't really like coffee, I don't really drink coffee, but I think it's an acquired taste, so maybe if I do enough of them, then it will become fine. I guess we'll put it in A tier. I thought the group stretching achievement was going to be easy, but as it turns out, I have to be the one to start the stretching, which is, uh, not as easy. I am way too anxious to invite a bunch of people to come stretch with me, let alone for 50 days. This one's gonna have to go in D tier. True friends, where we have to become good friends with somebody. How hard is it to truly make a friend? Unfortunately, there's not just a guide that you could look up for people in real life like you can for Animal Crossing, but even still, I think we can put this one in A tier. At least, I hope we could do something like that. Having a birthday and celebrating somebody else's birthday are obviously both S tier, I don't think I really need to explain those. Attending some fishing tournaments actually does not seem that hard. I live in a state that is very big into fishing, and I looked it up and there are multiple fishing tournaments that happen around me, so this one's gonna be an A tier. Bug catching tournaments, believe it or not, are much less common. I tried looking it up, all I could find was Pokemon videos, so uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and throw that one into D tier. Easy S tier for being somewhere for a countdown for New Year's. Bonus points if ninjas they're trying to get us to floss. I'm not seeing enough movement! Changing your clothes once? This better be an S tier for everybody. Pay dirt is about finding money that's buried in the ground. I mean, I know that sometimes people like bury gold in the ground, but like, I'm not a pirate. I don't have the X marks a spot to know where that is. Also, that's private property that I'd be trespassing on. But also, we could get lucky. C tier. Getting golden tools is actually pretty easy because I don't have to go through all of the random tedious stuff like catching every single bug. I can just go on Amazon and find it. I had a little bit of trouble locating a golden slingshot because I guess people just don't really make those, but still, we'll throw this one in A tier. Island and your land and host the most are both ones about visiting people's island and having people visit your island. I don't have an island, I don't know anybody who has an island, so both of these are going in D tier. And the final achievement is Active Island Resident, where all we have to do is play Animal Crossing for 300 days. I can do that. S tier. And that's the list. Pretty impressive, huh? Also, just for fun, here is the amount of Nook Miles that I would have received. That's a pretty good number, or a bad number. I don't know yet, I didn't add them up, but that's that's pretty cool, huh? How do you think I did? How do you think you would do? Do you think my list is fairly accurate, or do you think I was way off on some of them? Let me know. I appreciate you checking this one out. Go check out my other videos if you are so interested. Subscribe if you want, like the video if you want. You guys already know all that stuff. Appreciate you watching. See you in the next one.